Dear friends, we welcome you wherever you are getting us from to, to our subject today, whose title says uh, uh, the three angels' uh, message or the three angels' messages. We pray that the Lord will bless you even as you will listen to his word uh, today. We are getting our message for today from the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 14. We will read uh, verses uh, 6 down to 11. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6 down to 11. And I welcome you and I invite you to get your Bibles even as we go to the Word of God. Uh, the book of Revelation chapter 14, reading uh, verse 6, the Bible says, uh, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, uh, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Now notice, beloved, the first part of this message, God says uh, he sees, or John says uh, he sees an angel who is a messenger flying in the midst of heaven. This angel has an everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth. The Bible says to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, signifying beloved brothers and sisters, that the message to be born was to go to the ends of the world. The message to be preached was to reach out to all humanity. The message to be preached was to reach out to all peoples on the earth. And this is the message that is given in the book of Revelation chapter 14, as you read from verse 6 going down to uh, verse 11. If you want, you can even extend it uh, to uh, verse 12. The Bible here gives us a message that needs uh, to be preached before the coming back of Jesus. Because, beloved, when you go down uh, the text, you will see Christ coming down to harvest uh, the earth. This is a message that needs uh, to be given to the inhabitants of the earth before Jesus comes the second time. It is a message that is to prepare men and women for the advent of uh, uh, Jesus Christ. The Bible says uh, John sees an angel flying in the midst of heaven. This message is known as the three angels message. Why? Because John sees uh, three angels flying in the midst of heaven. And as these angels are flying in the midst of heaven, an angel in this particular sense does not necessarily mean a physical angel being seen, but it signifies messengers that the Lord will use to proclaim his word before he comes the second time. And this message needs to go to everyone. It needs uh, to reach out to everyone living on the face of the earth before Jesus comes again. And my brother, my sister, you and I are privileged to be a part of this uh, service today. Why? Because in so doing, we are being a recipient of this message that needs to go to the ends of the earth. What message did this angel carry that needed to go to every nation, to every tongue, to every person? As long as you live on the earth, you need to listen to this gospel because, beloved, this is the message that Jesus spoke of when he spoke in Matthew 24, talking to the disciples on the Mount of Olives. He says to them to say before he comes again, the message of the kingdom will be preached to all the world as a witness. And then the end will come. Matthew 24 verse 14 talks about the gospel that needs to reach the ends of the earth to prepare men and women for the coming of Christ. 
It is only when this message reaches the ends of the world that Jesus will come again. And this message that Jesus said needed to be preached in Matthew chapter 24 verse 14 is the message of the three angels that we find in the book of Revelation uh, chapter 14 when you read uh, the 6 down to verse 11. The Bible says uh, this message will be preached everywhere as a witness. Listen, beloved, there are those who will hear this message. Some will believe what the word of God says. Others will simply listen and decide to go their own way. There are those who will make decisions for Christ, who will come to his saving grace. And the Bible says, uh, this message, the everlasting gospel. Why is it known as the gospel? Because, beloved, it is the good news of God trying to reach out to fallen humanity, trying to save man from the pits of sin. And you and I, through this message, when the devil is finally galvanizing the inhabitants of the earth to rebel against God, when the devil is trying to galvanize, to gather the inhabitants of the earth, to honor that which is not found in the word of God. God gives a clear message to everyone living on the face of the earth to say they need not to heed the call of the enemy. They need not to heed the call of the devil. This is the message that God gives. Now, as we get back to our text, Revelation chapter 14, we have read verse 6, getting down to verse 7. This angel who was flying in the midst of heaven had the everlasting gospel, and the Bible says, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Now, this is commonly referred to as the first angel's message. My brothers, my sisters, this message calls men and women, number one, to say they need to fear God. They need to give glory to him. Why should they do that? Because the hour of his judgment has come and God calls them to worship him who made the heavens the earth, the seas, and the springs of water. The first angel's message calls men and women to fear God, calls men and women to give glory to God. It calls men and women to do so. Why? Because the hour of God's judgment has come. It further goes on to call men and women to worship the creator of the heavens and the earth, to worship the God of the universe who created the earth. Now, what does it mean to fear God? And how can we give glory to him? And uh, why should we do so? Because the hour of his judgment has come. Now, notice, beloved, uh, when you read the Bible, in the book of Job, chapter 2, verse 3, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and eschewth evil. Now, notice, beloved, the Bible says we need to fear God. What does it mean to fear God? It is not to be afraid of him. It is rather to give reverence to him. It is rather to give honor to him. And as we fear him from the experience of Job, we will live righteous lives by the merits of Christ. We will let go of sin. We will let go of sin because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the wisdom of the Lord leads us to fear him. It leads us to love him. It leads us to glorify him. It leads us to live in a certain way that will honor the God of 
the universe. The first angel's message is a call for men and women to live lives of sin, to come to Christ, to live righteous lives. The Bible says, fear God, meaning that, beloved, as we gather in our churches to worship him, we will be reverent even as we depict, even as we show this fear of the Lord. We will be reverent. We will mind what we do in his presence to depict the fear that we have, the respect that we have for our God. Many of us in this generation, as we go to church today, you will find people jesting, joking. They are in the presence of the Lord. You will find people Facebooking on WhatsApp in a church, and yet the Lord is speaking to them. My brothers, my sisters, the first angel's message calls you and I to live righteous lives by the merits of Christ. It is possible to let go of sin even as we decide to live right before him. The fear of the Lord, when you read Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13, the Bible says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way. Now, notice, beloved, the fear of the Lord causes you and I to let go of sin, to let go of pride, anything that draws us away from God. Because we fear him, we will be obedient to him. Because we fear him, we will live righteous lives. And the Lord is saying to you and I, the first angel's message, Cause men and women to fear God at a time when the world is polarized, at a time when the world, when the faith of many is waxing cold, at a time when technology is increasing, at a time when man seems to live as though there is no God in heaven. This message reminds men and women that as we prepare for the coming of Christ, we need to fear him. We need to glorify him. We need to live lives that are right before him. The Bible further goes on to say, we need to give glory to him. We need to glorify him. We need to exalt his name. We need to exalt his name by preaching about him, talking about him by the way we live. Our very lives need to show that we are Christians. My brothers, my sisters, uh, the other aspect that comes out from this message, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, the Bible says, Oh, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. For you were bought at a price, that is verse 20, Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20 calls you and I, beloved, to glorify God in our bodies by the way we live. The first angel's message calls us to fear God, to give glory to him. How do we glorify God in our bodies? We will mind what goes in our bodies. In other words, the first angel's message has an aspect of health for living. The health message also is embraced by the first angel's message because it is through this message that the Lord says we need to mind how we take care of our bodies. We will mind what we eat. We will mind what we drink. It is because of that, beloved, that you and I know that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. We will not drink alcohol. We will not smoke. Why? Because the Bible tells us not to do so. Whatever is harmful to our bodies, we will avoid it. We will use uh, temperately those things that are good. The Bible further goes on to say, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, to say, so whether you eat, drink, 
or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. My brothers, my sisters, the first angel's message calls you and I to live lives that are right before God, to let go of sin even as we surrender to Christ. And as Christ lives in us, we will be able to depict the glory of God, not only glorifying the God of heaven, but through the way we live, others will know that we have been with Christ. The second part of the message calls you and I to fear God, to give glory to him. Why should we do so? Because the hour of his judgment has come. Now, notice, beloved, the three angels' message, the first angels' message, reminds the inhabitants of the earth to say that there is a judgment taking place. Now, notice, beloved, the Bible says the hour of God's judgment has come. And Bible students, as you study the word of God, from Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, where the Bible says, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. They are beloved. We learn from the word of God that the cleansing of the earthly sanctuary that took place on the day of atonement was a day of judgment in Israel. Actually, it was known as Yom Kippur, which meant the judging of the people. And 10 days before the day of atonement, Trumpets could be sounded in Israel. Why? So that the people in Israel could prepare for the day of atonement when the high priest would go in the Holy of Holies and the inhabitants of Israel could afflict their souls. They would pray to make sure their lives were right with Christ. And the first angel's message reminds the inhabitants of the earth that we are living in the great day of atonement that began on the 22nd of October, 1844, because the 2300 day prophecy that you find in the book of Daniel comes to an end in 1844, when Christ moved from the holy place to the most holy to begin at the work of the investigative judgment, the pre-advent judgment. Listen, beloved, the first angel's message announces to the inhabitants of the earth that as you walk the streets of Lusaka, the streets of Zambia, the streets of the Copper Butte, wherever you are under the face of the earth, there is a judgment taking place in heaven. Jesus is almost winding up the work of saving humanity. The judgment that began in 1844 with those that first lived on the earth proceeds to every generation, those that have died. It ends with the living because, beloved, it is while we are still alive that all of us will be judged before the coming of Christ. The moment Jesus will come the second time, the pre-advent judgment would have already taken place. It would have already been decided who is to be saved and who is to be lost. Because the book of Revelation 22, when you read verse 12, the day that Jesus comes the second time, he simply comes to give rewards to everyone according to what they have done. It would have been decided already who is to be saved and who is to be lost, depending on the choices that each one of us would have made. So the first angel's message reminds men and women to say, while you live on the earth, there is a judgment taking place in heaven where all the inhabitants of the earth, those who who believe in God, those who profess to have a relationship with Christ, all their cases will be brought in review before God, beginning with our forefathers, those that have died, and it ends with us who are living today. We will be judged, some of us, while we are still alive, if Jesus finds us alive. My brothers, my sisters, I'm here to remind all of us to say that there is a judgment taking place. Your purse is pending. You have uh, indeed uh, 
to appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that whatever you have done in this life is brought in review to decide whether you are fit for heaven or not. And that has to happen before Jesus comes the second time. In Israel, the day of atonement was a day when men and women would afflict their souls. They would pray to make sure they were right with God. We are living in the great day of atonement. Well, judgment is taking place in heaven. We don't know when your name, my brother, when your name, my sister, will be brought before the judgment seat, when the name will be considered before the court in heaven. In the book of Daniel chapter uh, 7, you find uh, there Jesus uh, and, the, and God the Father, the judgment seat, that is Daniel chapter 7, when you read from verse 9 going down to 10, you find there the judgment was seated. The ancient of days is seated. The angels are there as witnesses. And Christ appears before the Father with the heavenly angels as witnesses, depicting an aspect of this very judgment. My brother, my sister, the first angel's message calls men and women to fear God to give glory to him. And it also reminds them that there is a judgment that began in 1844. And this judgment will soon come to an end. While probation still lingers, you and I have a duty, have an obligation to make sure our relationship is right with God. Because it is in this judgment if you are found wanting my brother, my sister, you could still be living on the earth if that by your daily decisions, it is decided that no, everything that Christ has done in order to save you, the messages you have listened to, they have not made any difference. The Lord will say enough with my daughter, enough with my son, I've pleaded enough with him. He or she has chosen the path of death, let her alone, let him alone. Well, you and I have an opportunity today to listen to the word of God. The Bible says there is a judgment taking place now, my brother, my sister, and we would do well to live our lives in the light of the judgment because whatever we do today, we will have an impact on the bearing of the judgment. How have you lived? in the light of the truths that you know? How have you lived in the light of the messages that you listen to every day? You have heard about thou shall not kill. Are you killing? You have heard about thou shall not steal. Are you still stealing? Are you robbing God? You have heard about the need to live righteously in this present life. How is your relationship with God? How is your prayer life? How much time do you spend in reading the word of God? How much time do you spend in ministering to others? My brothers, my sisters, the first angel's message calls men and women to fear God. And the last part of the first angel's message calls men and women to worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the seas, and the springs of water. The first angel's message calls men and women to worship the God who is the creator. Now, notice my brothers, my sisters, the Lord gives a message to the world at a time when the world is almost coming to an end. When men and women are almost forgetting the Sabbath of the Lord because the call to worship the creator of the heavens and the earth actually takes us back to the fourth commandment where God says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The first angel's message calls men and women to remember the Sabbath of the Lord. Why is this call made? It is made at a time when the devil is about to galvanize the inhabitants of the earth to honor a false Sabbath, to honor a day that God did not institute as a day of worship. 
Hence, the first angel's message caused men and women to worship the Lord on the Sabbath. The first angel's message caused men and women to fear God, caused men and women to glorify his name, to glorify him, caused men and women to do so. Why? Because there is a judgment taking place. Why? Because the judgment hour has come and men are further called to worship the creator of the heavens and the earth even on the Sabbath of the fourth commandment. Now notice, beloved, the first angel's message calls men and women to worship God, to fear God, to live righteously, to live right before his presence. The second angel followed Revelation chapter 14, verse 8, the Bible says, And another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen. Is fallen that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, notice, beloved, the second angel's message follows, saying, Babylon is fallen. Now, what does Babylon represent? Why does Babylon fall? What causes the fall of Babylon? Now, notice, the first angel's message announces the judgment hour. Cause men and women to worship God even on the Sabbath of the fourth commandment. It calls men and women to fear God. To live righteous lives, lives that are devoid of sin by the merits of Christ. To live obedient lives in accordance with the word of God. To live according to a thus says the Lord. Now those who reject the first angel's message, the second one comes and says to them, Where you are in those religious bodies, Babylon the word Babylon comes from the root word of Babel, which simply means confusion. It simply represents religious confusion. It represents bodies of Christ, churches that have decided to let go of the pure word of God and have decided to embrace human tradition. They have decided to embrace doctrines that are not found in the word of God. Now, notice, beloved, to try to build on this thought, the book of Revelation shows us or gives us a picture of two women. A woman in Revelation chapter 12, a pure, a pure woman representing God's true church. And another woman we find in Revelation chapter 17 and 18, representing an apostate or a fallen church. Now, these are two women, one representing the true church of God, the other one representing uh, the false women. Now, the Bible says Babylon is fallen because she... Now, the second angel's message announces the falling of religious bodies, Changes that have decided to let go of the clear truth of God's word. They have decided to embrace the false Sabbath, false teachings that are not found in the word of God. Now, notice, beloved, this woman, when you read Revelation chapter 18, verse 3, the Bible says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth, have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are what reach through the abundance of her de delicacies. When you read Revelation chapter 17, verse 4 and 5, you find the following words. The Bible says, uh, The woman was arrayed in paper and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones, and pearls, and having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations of the filthiness, of her fornication. Verse 5 says, and on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abomination of the earth. Now, this is still the same woman that we find in, uh, that is announced by the second angel to say Babylon is fallen because she, now, 
In Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, the Bible says this woman has daughters. Now, this represents the mother church. During the time of the Dark Ages, many Christian churches came from the mother church where Protestant churches came out from. Now, notice, beloved, as Protestantism was birthed as they came out from the Church of Rome, from uh, Papa Rome, they came out from there. Many churches sprang up all protesting against the errors that we are taught by the church that we are not found in the word of God. As they came out from there, they continued studying the word of God. But notice, beloved, truth is progressive and the uh, establishment, the discovery of God's truth is progressive. And these that were discovering truth some decided to stop in their quest of learning more of the word of God. And when the Bible announces to say Babylon is fallen, it refers to religious systems, Christian churches that have decided to continue worshipping, embracing doctrines that are not found in the word of God. Now, not just beloved, the Bible says, uh, what are these teachings that people have embraced? That the Bible says, if you reject the first angel's message, where God calls you to worship him on the Sabbath, you decide to worship on any other day, that the Bible does not enforce, that the law of God does not tell us to. The second angel declares that because you have decided to remain in that state, then the Bible declares that you are fallen. Uh, now, notice, beloved. There are deceptions today regarding the day of worship that people say you can worship on any other day. There are deceptions today regarding how people speak in tongues because the tongues that are prevalent today are not what was in the days of Christ. There are people today who worship idols. There are people today who believe that when you die, you don't surely die, you continue to exist. And yet the Bible is very clear. When somebody dies, you simply sleep. Today, there are those who say the law of God was done away with. There are those who believe in baptism by sprinkling, by any other means, and yet the Bible only enforces baptism by immersion. There are people who believe about the secret rapture, and yet the Bible, when you read it in content and context, the Bible does not teach about a secret rapture. There are those who believe they can drink alcohol, they can do all kinds of things. It doesn't matter. After all, Christ looks at the heart. And yet, beloved, all oh, those are deceptions. Now, the fall of Babylon, one writer I like reading, she writes and says, uh, when you read uh, in the certain book, Testimonies, volume 8, page 94, Last Day Events, page 198, you find the following words. She made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, how is this done? It is by forcing men to accept a spurious Sabbath. Now, notice, beloved, uh, you continue reading, uh, when you read Great Controversy, page 389 and 390, you find the following words. Not until this condition shall be reached, the union of the church with the world shall be fully accomplished through Christendom, Will the fall of Babylon be complete? In other words, the Lord is saying to you and I, the fall of Babylon only becomes complete when the false Sabbath or Sunday is enforced as a day of worship. Those who decide to continue worshiping on Sunday, when it is declared that Babylon has completely fallen, that Babylon has fallen, those who continue doing that, the Bible declares to say, they are fallen. So how do Christian churches fall from the standard of God's grace? It is by deciding to hold on to error when truth has been clearly presented. It is decide to hold on to things that are not found in the word of God when truth has been made plain in the word of God. So the fall of Babylon talks about the fall of Christian churches. 
Why? Because they have decided to embrace error instead of truth. They have decided to worship on a day that is clearly known to say that it is not enforced anywhere in scripture. It was uh, brought about by Constantine when you read uh, uh, somewhere 7th March 321 AD. Sunday is uh, changed uh, as a day of worship that was firstly meant for pagans, the worship of the sun god. Later it is Christianized and uh, Christians begin uh, to worship on that particular day during the Dark Ages. It rose to preeminence and uh, even when most of the Christian churches were coming out of the Catholic Church uh, during the days of the Reformation, forming their own Christian denominations, they continued worshipping on Sunday. But this last message to be given before Jesus comes the second time calls men and women back to the Sabbath of the fourth commandment. Why? Because, beloved, those who reject the first angel's message, the second one says, if you remain in your stead, then you are fallen. You are fallen from the standard of God's truth. Why are you fallen? Because you have decided to embrace a false Sabbath that is not enforced by Scripture. And the third one follows. Now, the third angel's message says, uh, Revelation chapter 14, when you read verse 9 to 11, if anyone worships the beast, and the image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he shall drink also of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength in the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth, the mark of his name. Now, notice, beloved, the third angel's message comes and warns inhabitants of the earth to say, because Babylon has fallen, because Christian churches have decided to continue worshipping on the first day of the week, even when the Bible says you ought to worship God on the Sabbath, even when they have heard the call of the first angel, they have heard a clear, thus says the Lord, they have decided to hold on to human tradition. The third angel follows and says, if you remain in Babylon, if you remain worshipping on the first day of the week, you will receive the mark of the beast either on your right hand or on your forehead, meaning that you either just support the system or you consciously make a decision. And yet God says, even as you decide to receive the mark of the beast, now notice, beloved, the Bible says, and they worshipped him. The mark of the beast is all about worship. When you read Revelation, Chapter 13, it is all about worship. The mark of the beast is about who will you worship. Now remember, the devil has always desired to be worshipped. When you read the book of Isaiah and you read the book of Ezekiel, you notice to say that when uh, the devil said, I will rise above the stars of the heavens, I will, I will be like the Most High. The devil has always desired to be worshipped. And as this world is almost coming to an end, he will try to enforce Sunday as a day of worship. And those who will continue worshipping on this day, when it is enforced by law, they would have received the mark of the beast. Some will not know what is happening. They will simply support they will receive the mark of the beast on their right hand. And those who consciously make the decision in the light of clear truth, they've heard, but they still continue to support the system. Why? Because of economic sanctions. Because Revelation chapter 13, verse 15 and 16 talks about uh, he was granted power to breathe, to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Now, notice, beloved, because of the death decrees, the fear, economic sanctions that will be passed, because of social sanctions that will be there, those some will be pressured to 
worshipping on this particular day, the first day of the week, they would receive the mark of the beast. Hence, the third angel's message wants men and women to say, do not continue worshipping on that particular day. Let go embrace the truth of God's word. And those who decide not to do so, the Bible says they are in route to receiving the mark of the beast. So the mark of the beast, beloved brothers and sisters, is all about worship. On which day do you worship? Who do you worship? Will you honor the law of God? The Sabbath of the Lord. Now, notice, beloved, the three angels' message calls men and women, number one, to fear God, to give glory to him. Why? Because the hour of his judgment has come. It calls men and women to worship the Lord on the Sabbath. Those who reject the first angel's message, the second one comes and tells them to say, because you have rejected this truth, you are fallen in your state where you remain in. And the third one says, because you are in a fallen state where you have embraced a false Sabbath, then you are in danger of receiving the mark of the beast. Now, notice, beloved, even as that is happening, God makes a call and a plea to his people because Revelation chapter 18, verse 2 uh, and, uh, and 4, the Bible says, And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon is the greatest fallen, is fallen. Now, notice, beloved, this again is a quotation of the message that we find in the second angel's message. Revelation 18, verse 2 says, And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the dwelling place of demons, of uh, demons, a prison of every foul spirit, a cage for every unclean and hated bird. Now, notice, beloved, Revelation chapter 18, when the church of God is empowered even with the latter rain, they will go and preach this gospel even with greater power. The three angels' message. And the Bible says, again, a call is made, a loud voice, a cry with a mighty voice, with the power of the Holy Spirit is made, announcing the fall of Babylon. Why? Because Babylon has decided to embrace error, has decided to embrace true error in the light of clear word of God. Now, notice, beloved, the mother church and her daughters, those Christian churches that have decided to continue worshipping on a day that scripture is not enforced, the Bible says they are in danger of receiving the mark of the beast. And God makes a call to his people in Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest ye share in her sins, and lest you receive her plagues. Now, notice, beloved, Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, calls men and women who are in Babylon, meaning that God has people who are found in religious bodies, in Christian churches, that are found worshipping on the first day of the week, even on Sunday. He says to them, come out of her, my people. Come out of churches that have decided to continue teaching error today, beloved. Church is a business. Everyone who wake up today, they are called by different names. Papas, bishops, apostles, name them. It has become a business. They have abandoned teaching the clear word of God. Church has become employment. And yet God says, we need to call men and women to the worship of the true God. And God says his people who are found in churches worshiping on the first day of the week, they will hear his voice and they will come out of Babylon to join his people who worship on the seventh day of the week. That is the same call that Jesus said would be heeded in John chapter 10 verse 16, where the Bible says, and the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Now, the Bible says they will hear the call of God. They will come out of Babylon. 
they will come and join God's people, even as they continue proclaiming the word of God, as they await the coming of Christ. My brothers, my sisters, this gospel that announces, that calls men and women back to the word of God is known as the everlasting gospel. It is the good news. A gospel is good news about God's grace, the salvation of mankind. The first angel's message, the second angel's message, the third angel's message is known as the everlasting gospel. Why is it the gospel? Because in the light of error, when the world is trying to depart from the word of God, when the devil is trying to marshal up his forces to fight the church of God, God raises as a people, calls his men and women to be separate, calls his church to live differently, to honor his word, to live by his word. Why? Because they need to exalt his law, to exalt his word, to live righteously as they embrace his gospel, as they embrace his truth in the light of error, God says to you and I, we need to decide to honor God, to live by his word. Is it your desire, my brother, my sister? You are saying, even as this gospel is being preached, will it be your desire to follow God, to take him at his word? Or maybe you say to God, no, not this time, Matthew 24, verse 14, says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world as a witness, and then the end will come. Others will hear the gospel, they will not believe it. Others will hear this gospel, they will believe it. And this gospel, the three angels' message, it is the last message to be given to this world to prepare a people for the coming of Christ, to prepare a people not to be deceived by the devil, to prepare a people who will be willing to cooperate with God, who will be willing to honor and be obedient to God. May God bless you as you ponder on these words shared today, announcing and calling men to fear God, to give glory to him because the hour of his judgment has come calling men and women to worship God even on the Sabbath. Those who decide not to, they are declared fallen. Why? Because they have decided to embrace something that is not found in the word of God. Worship on a day that scripture does not enforce. And if they continue doing so, they are in danger of receiving the mark of the beast. And God says, all those who receive the mark of the beast, ultimately, they will be destroyed. It is a call to you and to me to remain truthful to God's word. May God bless you, my brother, my sister, as you make a decision to embrace the truth of God's word. Amen. Hi, my name is Maimbo Hagoma. I'm the chairperson for UNSA PCM Technical Committee. Hope you have been blessed by this episode of Take Week of Evangelism. Continue to be with us even in the other coming days. If you'd like to have further Bible study, please contact us on 0964-900-466. 0964-900-466. Or if you'd like to have a prayer request, Please contact us on 0972-865789. 0972-865789. May God be with you and remain blessed.